Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a very exciting video this week because I have been sent a telescope to review from ASCAR. It is the latest telescope in their PHQ lineup. It's the PHQ-80 and I get to use this for the next couple of months. So join me in this video while I unbox the telescope, give you my initial impressions and capture first light with the PHQ-80. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to give you a little bit of information about how this came about. Sharpstar, who, um, who make the ASCAR series of telescopes, saw my review that I did for the ASCAR 400, this telescope here. So I bought this telescope with my own money. I've had it for about a year and I absolutely love it. I did a review of this telescope, which you can check out, um, which I link in the description below. But they um, asked if they could send me their latest uh, telescope in the PA PHQ lineup, the PHQ80 for review, um, and I get to use this over the next few months before I have to send it back to them. So they did send me this telescope, um, I don't get to keep it, it does have to go back to them. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a bit of information before we get going. Um, so I'm going to crack open the box, it arrived in the post today, I can't wait to get inside and see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to open it up and give you my initial impressions. I think I'm going to move this telescope because last time I left it here, I nearly knocked it off. So the rotator itself is great. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I've unpacked the telescope. Uh, great packaging as you would expect, double box, lots of foam, but you get that with pretty much every telescope. Um, and this is everything that I received from ASCAR. So I have some quality assurance uh, information and a user manual, um, which looks very thin, but it is a telescope, so I don't really know what you can include in the user's manual. I have the telescope itself, which uh, first impressions looks great. Uh, looks very, very well built indeed. Um, but yeah, very solid, very well built. I love the fact that it has a locking uh, screw for the dew shield. Um, that was one of the complaints I had with the ASCAR 400 because that was a little bit uh, sloppy. It used to slop down a little bit during the night. So this is great that I can actually uh, fix that in place. The focuser at the back looks uh, incredible. It looks very well built. Um, that is one of the key features, I think, of this telescope. It does have a very solid uh, focuser and they have claimed that it can handle quite high uh, payloads as well. So if you've got a big heavy camera um, that you're looking to attach, um, it should be okay. Uh, longer dovetail as well. Again, one of the complaints I had with the uh, ASCAR 400, the FRA 400, is that it came with a tiny dovetail. So um, so initial impressions, the telescope looks great. It has the 80 millimeter um, front element, which looks very nice indeed. Um, the focal length of 600 millimeters um, and an F ratio of 7.5. So not the quickest uh, telescope in the world. Um, but yeah, it looks very, very well built. Um, not overly heavy. It is a lot lighter than the other telescope in the PHQ range, uh, the 107, I believe it is. Um, so yeah, I think that this should be absolutely fine on my mount. Um, well, everything else that was included, I have this attachment, which screws on the back. I'm assuming that's uh, the attachment. Yes, different, uh, different attachments for different uh, size cameras. So that's great. So I should be able to fit my 2600 on there. No problem whatsoever. They also included the 0.76 focal reducer. So that's uh, very nice of them to include that. Um, this will take the, uh, the focal length down to about 450 mil and take it down from F. Uh, 7.5 to f 5.6 5.7 something like that um, this is very nice very well built um, and there you go look at that that is a big chunk of glass a little bit weighty that um, but it seems very solid very nicely built um, 
very well finished. So um, I have to work out actually how to attach that to the camera. I'm assuming it just goes between the telescope and the, the, the camera, but I'll, I'll work that out when I use it. So tonight I'm planning to use this telescope at its native focal length and not use the reducer just yet. Um, I will test out this reducer at a later date. Um, so I'm gonna use it with my 2600 mono um, and the Antlia narrowband filters. Um, I don't have a lot of clear skies at the moment. I only have a two and a half hour window of twilight. So we don't have any astronomical darkness here in the UK um, for another couple of months or another month or so. Um, but I will hopefully get a couple of hours worth of data. So now I need to uh, set it up, get uh, the focuser on there, get the camera on there um, and find out how I can mount a uh, guide scope and my ASIR. Okay, so I've taken the EAF off my other telescope and I'm just about to fit it to the PHQ. That shouldn't be a problem at all because there are definitely fittings and uh, spaces for it. Um, I know it is compatible with this telescope. Um, the only thing that is concerning me slightly with this scope is where I'm gonna actually mount um, my guide scope. Now there is a bracket here which I can mount, um, but then that will be off center and that might play up balance a little bit. I wish they would have put a uh, mounting plate on the top here to incorporate it into um, the handle. The handle is very nice, it's very well built, um, but I know another, lots of other telescopes, um, even telescopes that the Ascar, um, the Ascar make and Sharpstar make have that mounting bracket on top. So that would have been a nice simple place to put the guide camera, uh, the guide scope and camera. I think I'm gonna have to attach it here um, and hopefully that doesn't upset the balance too much. Okay, so that was really easy. It took me about two minutes to fit the EAF to the telescope. Uh, it's really handy that there are actually two uh, holes there ready to accept a focuser. Um, now I just need to find out how to uh, set up a guide scope and cam with this. Okay, so as you can see, I have finally set up this rig. It didn't actually take too long. The main issue was finding somewhere to put the guide cam and scope. Now, what I uh, managed to do was find a screw and attach it through this handle. So I took the handle off, uh, screwed it into the bottom of my 30 mil guide scope from ZWO. Now that's fine as long as you have a thread where you can do that um, on the bottom of the guide scope. So I think that that could potentially be an issue for some people. It would be nice to just have a mounting bar at the top here um, and I know you can buy them for the FRA series so I'm sure you can probably buy them again for the PHQ if not now in the future. Apart from that the the overall impressions is that this is an incredibly well built telescope everything seems very premium. Um, one of the key features that um, Sharpstar told me about this telescope was this larger three inch focuser. This seems incredibly well built it seems very solid. The attachment rings with different size threads is a very nice touch and is very thought out. Um, I also as just noticed that it does have the, um, the degree rotation markings on the, the rotator as well, which is one thing that um, I, I would have liked to have seen on my FRA 400. So one of the other reasons you might buy the PHQ uh, series of telescopes over the FRA 400 or the FRA 600 is um, according to Sharpstar anyway, the fact that they should produce less chromatic aberration. Now I never thought that that was an issue with my FRA 400. I love that scope. It produces fantastic images, um, but apparently the optical design of this telescope should be slightly superior. Now the downside of this compared to say the FRA 600 which has the same focal length is the focal ratio. This is a slower telescope, this is f7.5 whereas the FRA 600 is I believe 5.6. Um, so this is a little bit slower but might be better if you're after those perfect stars and you're going to be pixel peeping in the corners. Um, the FRA 600 is going to be slightly quicker um, and allow you to gather a little bit more light. Um, but yeah, I'm all set up and I'm really excited to use this. Um, hopefully I can gather a few hours of data over the next few nights and show you an image.
Okay, so I have had a couple of nights using this telescope, the Ascar PHQ-80, and I have to admit, I am very impressed with the telescope so far. Like I said when I was unboxing, it just feels like a premium product. The build quality is absolutely excellent, but I guess you would expect that on a telescope that costs nearly £1,500. But overall, the, the focuser is really nice to use. It seems to work exceptionally well with the ZWO EAF. Um, I've used it over three nights and not had any issues, and the stars look absolutely pinpoint, look very tight indeed. So overall from first impressions is i'm very impressed so when sharpstar reached out and asked me to test this telescope i was obviously absolutely delighted to be getting a new telescope to try but when i looked at the specs i can't help but admit i was a little bit disappointed especially when you compare it with their other telescope at 600 millimeters the fra 600 so this is 7.5 focal ratio, the FRA 600 is f5.6. So to me, the FRA has an advantage of being able to gather more light uh, per exposure. So if I was to go out and buy one of these telescopes initially, I think I would have gone out and bought the FRA 600, not this scope. However, having used this telescope, I can see why you would go for it. The stars all the way across the field are absolutely pinpoint sharp. I will put some HA data up on the screen now. So this is 16 10 minute subs taken over one night. And as you can see, if you zoom in right to the corners, those stars are very, very round and very tight indeed. They look absolutely fantastic um, so overall yeah really happy with how the stars look from this telescope I did manage to capture um, some O3 and S2 data as well and pull together a Hubble palette image for you guys this is not the best time to be testing out a telescope here in the UK because we only have a few hours of twilight each night so I only have about two and a half hours or three hours of twilight we don't get any astronomical data darkness so it's not the easiest time to be imaging um, and I think the images would look better if I was testing later on or earlier in the year but so far I'm very impressed with this telescope. Um, so like I said this isn't a full review this is just my initial impressions and first light video. I'm hoping to use this telescope over the next few months and pull together a few more images before I give you my, my final thoughts. Um, if you've got any questions you want me to cover in that review, if you want to know any Anything about this telescope please do uh, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to give you my honest opinion um, but thank you very much for watching here is the image that I managed to capture with this telescope um, please do hit that like button and I will see you in the next video <laughs>